Welcome back. You're listening to Blaze Radio and BlazeRadioOnline.com. I'm Gannon Hannibal, station manager here at Blaze. This year, Blaze Radio is turning 40 years old. It's an absolutely insane anniversary. I'm really excited to celebrate. So up next, we've got a special track just for you. It's a little longer than the songs you're used to, but it represents what I think a lot of us at Blaze Radio know this station's all about unique experience that they can't get anywhere else on campus. There's just so much you can do in Blaze between writing articles, making podcasts, being on the radio, doing social media, photo, video. All kinds of different programming are available at Blaze and I think it just it's very representative of the amazing diversity and the wide array of interests that our students have. I think you know freshman year everybody kind of comes in and you know, you get to know everybody at Taylor Place or Taylor Fest, and then it's time to kind of get the business, at least uh, in the sports degree path. And you're just kind of looking to get in where you fit in. And, you know, Blaze is the, the one that stuck out to me. Uh, you go to the opening meeting and you're hooked from that point. It was just very, it was very casual. It was very fun. It was very friendly. It was a friendly environment, you know, and so welcoming and just so excited that you had the passion, the same kind of passion uh, that they had that it, it made me feel like uh, a sense of belonging and that sense is that like we're in an industry where like there's a lot of like white people but like seeing how there's a lot of latinos uh, african americans asians that are wanting to get that position as well it makes me feel like i'm not alone in this industry this is a great place for um people who are um from different cultures or people who have been outcasts like you know in their lives in high school, in middle school, and for them to actually like find their voice and do something that they're really passionate about. It's kind of an island of misfit toys in a lot of ways. Anyone who was maybe struggling to find their place in college or in journalism school in general, when they come to Blaze, they kind of feel like they have a home. My community and, and some of the friendships that I have now, especially, um, yeah, some of my best friends are people I met through Blaze. Um. I was an off-campus student for the first two years of college and you know it's very hard to find friends in college when you're especially when you're an off-campus student because all the dorm kids have their like their cliques together and whatever and you're kind of just like an outsider. So I was like just at student org night and I thought hey let's join Blaze Radio. I also thought it was the coolest thing. Like Change to Blaze Radio from the Blaze because a larger uh, conservative talk radio station decided to be the blaze. And when you Googled us, you couldn't find us. So <laughs> we tried to change it while making it as still close as possible. Um, so every time someone says blaze radio, it makes my heart sing. Um, please continue to refer to it as blaze radio. And we had newscasts at noon, five and 11 o'clock at night. We didn't really have shows like you guys have now. We had a few. I mean, did I, would I have loved to be all sports all the time? Sure. But that's not real. That was not reality. First of all, nobody had even heard of that at that point anyway. My freshman year, I, uh, I, I did, a, I did the kind of the rotation that at the time was you would get to choose from the music on the mega seg. You didn't really get to build your own show quite yet. It was just, you know, I was a, it was a rotational shift I would do. The studio didn't have a name for a long time. Um, it was just the Blaze Studio. Um, yeah. And then my freshman year was the first year it was in the Cronkite building. It was in Tempe in the basement of the arts building for a very long time. And it would fall apart all the time. Like we would just like randomly go off air. Like we just like, and then we would wait for it to kick back in. And that was crazy. But there were so few members of the time that it kind of didn't matter. And I think there were 45 members of Blaze altogether. When I became a sophomore and I became music director, there were a hundred pe people in my department. <laughs> and it was, I know, I think there were a hundred people in Blaze and 45 in the music department. Then my sophomore year, my first year, there were a hundred people in the music department and it was madness. Like there were so many people. And I would ask like my, my fellow, like older uh, board members, like, how do I do this? And they're like, we're learning too. Like Blaze has never been this popular. 
Blaze is more than just a couple microphones with headsets and speakers. There's people behind those microphones, just as there's people listening to those speakers. There's people writing scripts for shows airing after this one. There's producers, there's editors, podcasters, and an entire social media crew. What makes Blaze modern isn't the new artist singles being played on air. It's the chronic growth that our community accrues together. If that mini speech didn't convince you, I'm sure this next track will. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone loves the Bill Austin Radio Studio, but it blazes so much bigger than just the studio. There's so many cool opportunities to, like I said, make friends is number one, in my opinion. And um, Blaze is really just um, a family, and that is why I decided to stick around, and that's where I've put all my energy. Um, it's the student org that I've decided to put all my eggs in. The feeling of family, you know, it, it's a big body of student uh, of, of students in the, the student body of the, of the club, but that family feeling is something that I really, really enjoyed a whole lot. Like in my experience, uh, Blaze Radio has been like the least judgmental place I've ever been to because everyone's there to do their own kind of weird thing. Um, and you'll be surprised that like a lot of people want to do the same weird thing that you do. And then you end up collaborating and you end up just like, again, making really good friendships. And it's something you won't know unless you go do it. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be in audio or radio without uh, Blaze Radio because I spent like hours just in the production room in the Tempe studio, uh, just like sitting there making promos because it was fun. Mm -hmm. And I smile when I'm walking down the downtown campus promenade and I hear Blaze on the speakers and I, and I can hear that it's a show dedicated to music that you don't typically hear on regular radio. Those are always typically my favorite kind of show up and say, hey, I, I like music. I don't know what to do with it, but I, I really like music. And then all of a sudden, you know, you love music and you love sports. All of a sudden you have a radio show that, you know, is completely changing the landscape on how people have conversations surrounding music and, and sports. And you also have a volleyball call that's being nominated as an IBS award. And then on top of that, that tiny bit of interest you had, you know, in this radio station and in audio reporting actually transforms you into the station manager of this station. First got the blaze, actually. I came in wanting to be a sports journalism. Uh, I, I wanted to be a sports journalist. That was it. I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. That was why I came to Blaze Radio, because I wanted to do play by play and have my own show. And uh, when I auditioned for Bottom of the Sixth and I like tried in the, you know, the roulette wheel of play by play broadcasts, I didn't get one. And I still wanted to be a member of Blaze, but I knew that my first semester of freshman year, unless it was a podcast, I wasn't going to get a chance to go on air doing sports stuff. So I pivoted and decided I wanted to have a DJ shift because I love music and I love sports. So um, I got a DJ shift, fell in love with the music side of Blaze, and have just leaned into that ever since. It's a home for people who have multiple interests and they're able to find a home for every single one of those interests here at Blaze Radio in a way that I don't think you're going to find anywhere else in the country. I mean, everything about it has honestly led to me staying here for these four years and, and having the experience that I've had. We show up for each other. We stand up for each other and we support each other, even in things that we do outside of the station. And I really want people to know that Blaze family isn't something we just say, it's something we do every day. Everybody's very supportive of each other. Um, it's a great environment. As far as the radio station itself, you know, uh, it's expanded a lot in the last five years. You know, I think it, it holds up to, obviously it holds up to a lot of the online internet streaming uh, college radio stations since we won best in the country. I realized I had a home at Blaze when People started saying hi to me whenever I was in 320. And when I started talking to people outside of Traffic Jam and Press Pass, and I really developed some rich friendships through Blaze. And at the same time, I was doing work that excited me and still excites me. And I think that that's something that we all want out of our time in college and just in general. Out of, out of college, in life, <laughs> whatever. Um, I think we're all looking for that thing that sort of, to put it dramatically, sets your soul on fire. For two years, you know, I just like 
ran into people and like encouraged people to join and everything you know as the music director and so like I cut a lot of people like when I was done <laughs> I like I still tear up thinking about it a little bit um Gannon who's now the station manager collected messages from a bunch of people like saying goodbye to me and that just was like I can't even think about it now without crying it was the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me I, the music department like for the first time like as like me being the music director like you know being in the room I, I was very nervous before because I was like you know Vaughn set such like a good standard and example and everybody loved him and looked up to him and you know in my mind I'm like oh my god I have such big shoes to fill like I was very afraid that like people wouldn't like like me as much as they liked him you know that's like cliche to say but like you know I, I felt like I was kind of like being an outsider, but um, I walked into the room and everybody was so excited to see me. And like after the meeting, everybody would, like come and talk to me. And it was just, you know, made me so emotional. Like after I got home, I like, I low-key kind of cried. Like that's what's great about Blaze. And that's what sets it apart from anything else at Cronkite or really a lot of the stuff that people will get to do in their lives. At Blaze, the possibilities for career growth are endless and cover all forms of journalism. There's sports, news, music. You can be anything from a play-by-play -play broadcaster to a radio DJ to a newscaster or a producer of any of those departments. At Blaze, you'll always have a place to go. Created a, a really inclusive environment in which people have been able to thrive and uh, attack and approach their objectives and their dreams. Uh, inside the department and do a lot of really cool stuff. In addition to that, the game of the week stuff that we've been doing this year has been really cool. The new partnership that we've got with Phoenix Rising and doing professional soccer on Blaze for the first time, that's been very special. And just really more than anything, the thing that I'm proudest of is the opportunities that hopefully I've been able to be a part of providing for the members in the department this year and, and last year as broadcast director as well a woman in the sports industry the sports department has always been um, such a welcome to that and making sure that there are opportunities not just for the men but the women as well between you know uh, we have specialty shows just about women in sports by Gabby Sharm and Nicole Pinter and then you know we have women doing play-by-play -play calls every week during the spring semester because it was always my thought that we should be doing the games that the professional radio stations are not doing. So uh, the biggest things that I think I've tried to do is try and make broadcast feel big again, right? I think a lot of people had gotten into this habit of just kind of, you know, showing up and, and doing a broadcast. And I wanted it, my hope in a lot of ways this year was to come in and reestablish like a sense of grandeur to it, like a significance, a way to stock. Because our broadcast, especially now that we've started doing our Twitter streams um, for Game of the Week, um, so that like is something that we've started doing this year where it's like a simulcast where it's streamed on both Mixler and also on our Twitter live so that people can just tune in right away, like right on their social media feeds. I think that makes it even more easier. Um, and we like promote our broadcasters and our play-by-play -play calls as well as whatever our specialty shows are and stuff on sports. So. With the programming stuff, it was just to, you know, lead by example, you know, our show Heat Jack and, and doing the live streams and we can reach hyper niche audiences in sports and people want that. It's our responsibility at Blaze to show people that whatever you are truly passionate about, interested in, no matter how small it is, how small that community is or how specific what you care about is, go pursue that. What I did was a Spanish sports talk show called Blaze Deportes, and I was able to basically a uh, bottom of the six or any other sports talk show just do it in Spanish, you know, and talk about every single topic I can. And it really, really helped me in my current career because I'm currently a sports host on the Spanish radio station at the same time doing play-by-play -play for the Phoenix Suns. And it's really helped me just to get those reps in a different language and just fine tunes of, of, of my craft and I was really, really, really grateful for that. I called my first women's basketball game as a freshman. It was a top five team. Stanford University came to town. They're playing ASU. I felt empowered that night because I was one of the only girls that year that did a call. Oh, like other girls and like freshmen who come into Blaze like, hey, you can do cool stuff for Blaze. Like, you can like don't even don't, like like ignore the boys like like there's girls here who we we got you we'll we'll make sure if you want to do something in blaze we'll we'll help you out. 
Hello and welcome back to Bottom of the Sixth. I'm Grace Del Pizzo here tonight with Tia Reed. We have a full show for you. Both my co-hosts, they're both leaving. And so um, I know I had known that Grace had wanted to be on Bottom of the Sixth. And so I asked her and I'm like, well, we've got two girls. Let's see if I can find another one. And then I did. And so um, we were able to have a really cool show and just that was pretty cool being a part of it. We're just here to show people that it can be done and that you shouldn't worry about what any of the other people will say about you because you belong here. Press Pass and Traffic Jam are our two flagship news shows. They have been for years now. Oh, I think I think it's safe to say over like about 20 years or so um, that these shows have been running. And those are the kind of tent poles, if you will, of the news department. Those are shows that run every year at the same time. Times have changed, but relatively the same time, the same days, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have plenty of other new shows that have kind of come up and become their own, uh, really their own thing and their own shows. And those Blaze members have really done a phenomenal job. You look at shows like Hypothetically Speaking and The Review Squared and all those kind of shows that have really taken that passion for uh, storytelling and for news reporting that I talked about and kind of making it their own. Sports, sports department's really exciting because you have football calls and you have games that you cover and all that kind of stuff. Music department, you have concerts, you have art album reviews, you have artists interviews, all that kind of stuff. News department, we are really trying to drum up that same kind of enthusiasm for, frankly, for, for us, for our department, right? So um, one of the things that we are looking to do more of is election coverage. We did a live show on election night, November 4th, whatever the date was, I want to say it was November 4th, we did a live election show. Um, it, was, it was a bunch of us in the studio. We had former news director who was my predecessor, Julia Sorgi. She was behind the board um, producing, operating everything. And we had students um, not in the studio with us, but over Zoom who were contributing by paying attention to and covering um, different states, different swing states, different races, key races, all that kind of stuff. I, I was in charge of reporting on Pennsylvania and being able to really do that deep dive and report on, you know, what are the voting trends they're looking like and how is the political climate there? I wound up being the dude on air, basically, just on election night, just explaining like, oh, yeah, these are the state and local stuff that people are paying attention to, kind of explaining some local positions. The initial election night, when it turned out that there was no winner yet, at least as of yet to announce, um, that, that was a little anticlimactic, to say the least. Um, night two was Julia Sorgi, the then news director, Nick Sanchez, who was assistant news director and is news director now, and Vaughn Jones, uh, the former music director. Um, oh, and uh, night two also had Ethan Jordan, uh, who was then sports director. We covered the Democratic presidential debate, which was downtown at the Orpheum. And we did, I believe it was the first ever live half hour newscast on location with live reporters at different spots. Now we had the, the presidential debate in uh, uh, Gamage and we did the same thing for that. So we had probably 12 people on air at the time for both of those events. Cronkite is all about like, you're not an aspiring journalist, you are a journalist, right? And I think something that was really, unique to that experience was we say that all the time you're a journalist not an aspiring journalist when you're here but that was one of the first times I really felt that it's just like how it's always been so freshmen start out as a DJ or any new member start out as a DJ um but like also anybody can be a DJ it's not just like the newbies so we have the spark also which is our uh, music blog and um, on that blog, anybody can write about anything music related. So you could write about like album reviews, concert reviews, you could write about hot takes <laughs> in like the music industry. And if, you know, there's like an artist coming to town that somebody really likes, um, they shoot me a text or an email 
and they're like, could I get a press pass? Um, and while I can't guarantee a press pass, I'll have to say that last semester, um, we had 13 um, confirmed interviews that with like artists, big or small, that happened both on Zoom, um, at like a concert venue or um, live in our studio. So it was really cool. Open mic is new. Um, I started that. It's basically our um, department staple show. So the news department has press pass and traffic jam. Um, and they've always had that. And that's like the show where the freshmen can come in and anchor and, you know, get like started in the news industry. So I wanted to do something similar for music. I would say I would credit Blaze for 90% of my pivot into music journalism. Uh, I, I came here because I wanted to be on TV or radio talking about sports. And now I want to write about music. Like I knew I wanted to do sports journalism, which I didn't even end up doing <laughs> afterwards. But like, I just have like a love for music. Like my name is Stevie Ray Vaughan. Like that's where I get so much of like my essence from is like my love of music. And I, you know, actually funnily enough, I applied for uh, to be in the Blaze Music Department and the State Press Arts and Culture Desk. And the State Press never emailed me back. Um, and so I ended up, you know, in Blaze and then you know radio is now my profession and like i love still love music like with my very heart and soul and i was able to be the music director for two years my first semester uh, my freshman year uh, i was constantly in the ear of von jones the music director uh, because i wanted to interview so many musicians and uh, he saw that initiative and wanted me to become an assistant music director and it's actually funny how it happened um, when i it was October of my freshman year. So I was like two months in, I hardly knew anybody. I kind of knew Vaughn just because he was the music director. And I was crossing the street uh, at Taylor Place, um, from Cronkite to Taylor Place. And he dropped a glass bottle of Starbucks coffee and it shattered in the middle of the road on First Street. And I like was walking, we were crossing paths. And uh, he, when he dropped it, I was like, oh, like, do you need help clean this up? And he was like, no, 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 I got it. Uh, by the way, do you want to be an assistant music director? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> hell yeah, I'll be assistant music director. That sounds awesome. And uh, that was pretty much the start of my, my music contribution. Um, One time the lead singer and the guitarist from the main were trying, they were just like around. And I had like gotten word that they were trying to like go to the station. And eventually I had to come in and be like, hi, um, you guys are like really famous and people will stop going to class if they see you in here. So I need you to leave. And they were like, no, we like want to be on air. And I was like, awesome. I completely agree. I think you should also be on air. Please send me an email. Let's schedule something. <laughs> and then they like, uh, I think they came back for our Blaze by the Bell, which is our pop punk show, um, like two weeks later and did like an exclusive interview about their like new songs that were coming out, uh, which was really funny. a pilot for for the everyone to look at and uh i initially and it was just me i it was just me running it uh and i called it uh folk you uh um, <laughs> and it was uh denied <laughs> it was not allowed they were like that's not so i i wasn't allowed to have that show next semester is when i i met some of my my good friends and we I, I re revamped the show to be folkin around which was a little more tasteful bands come on we had the um we had a grammy uh, award winner on uh who was a member of the kingston trios we, we were probably the least professional show uh on the blaze and uh it was uh, a nightmare probably for you know your position um and everyone who listened in i know that my there's a reason they're not allowed to drink beer in the studio anymore um we had, we our show was canceled twice um uh trying to build a brand and nerd sesh has done an excellent job of this and you know we're seeing a lot of really really good returns from some of the freshman shows queen of the court's been excellent for and seymour's been excellent and everybody else really who's contributed has been awesome and, and just trying to encourage individuality. I, I wanted my own show um, and I wanted for Infusion. And um, I was, you know, I was really afraid because um, I didn't know how the board was gonna react to like me having a foreign show. So um, I remember like I was texting Vaughn about it. And I think like, if I remember my text correctly, I was like, 
I don't know if this is like a stupid idea, but <laughs> time at Cronkite, I think I was best known as uh, for for um, hosting and producing Daisy Tunes on Blaze Radio, which uh, was up until now. Um, I mean, as far as I know, Arizona's longest running indie music radio show, and at some point of time, it was Arizona's only indie music radio show. And I didn't want to have a show where you know it would just be like something very simple. You know, I kind of wanted to kind of break that boundary of like, no, I want to do something that's you know gonna make you feel uncomfortable because like if you walk down taylor mall and you like hear a song that's not in english you know like half the time you're gonna be like okay what the heck is that or half the time you're gonna be like oh that's weird you know what i mean like that's kind of what i wanted to do i was sort of playing it on my phone on the shuttle no headphones like anyone around me could hear it. like i mean it wasn't like super loud but like at least the people in the seats like closest to me could hear it and i could see they were like bopping along to it and i thought how fun would it be to play this on the radio and i thought okay let's let's do like an indie music show and then i thought i don't want to play just hindi songs because i think a lot of people when they think of india they think of just bollywood and hindi and i'm like india is so much more than that when like tensions were like high between like you know where I'm from and also America it was like mid-January of last year I'm pretty sure you know I texted Vaughn again and I was like I'm kind of afraid of like doing my show because I don't want like backlash like people like you know getting angry because like I'm from Iran right and um and you know his his answer was so heartfelt he was like you know at Blaze we create an environment where like you can do and be whoever you want to be um, and if anybody were to ever like tell you not to do that, it's like, come talk to me and I will like attack them. <laughs> like he's like, I will like literally fight them. I, I am so happy that after I graduated, I'm still seeing like Autria and Rithwe carry on the foreign music torch on plays. I'm actually in a student organization for once where being different and being from somewhere else is appreciated. Um, and I've never like experienced that before. You know, I've always just been like, oh, it's Autria, like, the Iranian girl, or it's Atria, like, oh, the girl who can't speak English. But now it's like, oh, it's Atria, the girl with like the very cool show and like the girl who like is empowered and like doing like all these cool things. It's a family where we can all grow together. This is a place where everyone belongs, where members have made lifelong friends and everlasting memories. Being in Blaze has allowed so many of us to further develop our skills, explore what we want to do, and gain confidence in who we are. I went to college very fully thinking I would be a writer, um, doing print and newspaper stuff, and I do work there as a Republic, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a print journalist. If it weren't for Blaze, I would probably have stuck to print. Before Blaze, I think I really wanted to be a sports writer, and... Um, through joining the sports social media team, that's made me realize that's what I want to do. I want to run a social media account for a professional sports team. So without Blaze, I wouldn't have known that at all. I mean, it's given me all these broadcast opportunities. I know for a fact, my experience at Blaze, I did a radio show for the Fox Sports uh, affiliate station in my hometown over COVID. I think um, getting the opportunity to interview musicians and write stories for the Spark online. Um, that's a large reason for why I fell in love with music journalism. And that's what I want to do now. Um, you know, as I get into the professional field of journalism, I want to write about music. And I think Blaze kind of lit the spark for that, uh, pun intended. <laughs> I came in wanting to do photography and um, Blaze gave me a place to do that because I got to shoot um, a bunch of the women's basketball games as a freshman and then I followed them all the way through the Pac-12 tournament and got to shoot a bunch of games through then. Uh, it definitely helped me be uh, assertive and kind of I, I knew that I could like I could make a show happen like I could put together essentially like a mini concert uh, on pretty short notice. I think furthering my my interest and my passion for radio um, is big. That's what I'm doing now. I've taken radio classes. I do freelance kind of podcasting on the side, all that kind of stuff. I think the one thing Blaze has has really helped my me personally with has been confidence. Like they became some of my best friends like day one that I was at Cronkite. So that's like the best part for me is all the friends you make. Very quickly became where I met 99% of my friends. This person was Julia Sorgi. Um, she was the news director for my first two years here. 
And I've known Julia since I was like 13 years old. We went to a sports journalism camp together in Boston. She's the one who talked me into joining Blaze. So uh, before I even got to ASU, I knew I wanted to be a part of Blaze Radio because she was. Um, and she has been uh, certainly a positive voice in my ear since you know being a member of the station. Uh, whether it's trying to become a director, trying to become station manager, you know, trying to find opportunities, she's always been in my corner. So, Kirsten's one of the first people I like got to be friends with at Blaze. Like, I mean, I, I would I would say Vaughn is probably one of the two or three closest friends I made at Cronkite. Wow. Relationships that I've made with people, um, the friendships that I've I've drawn up, whether it was through just my community here at at college, um, my community, even within this room, we're sitting in 320 right now, I've developed a lot of incredible relationships with people just talking women's sports in this particular room. Definitely been, been you know, times where I've been overwhelmed, like, like a college student does, and, and the Blaze family, um, the amazing board of directors have, have been there for me. I, I've met two of my best friends through this club, so they're always here for me, and um, a lot of my relationships, friendships, all of that have been created through this club. Blaze is where you meet your family. I mean, I went to a wedding last year. The, the girl whose wedding it was, I met at Blaze. The date I brought was from Blaze. <laughs> Three or four of us in the wedding party were all from Blaze. Um, and then I texted Gannon <laughs> as, like, as like a last resort. And I was like, listen, like... I need to go do this. Um, I don't know if you have a car on campus, but if you could help me out, that would be wonderful. And, you know, he was so, so nice. He was like, absolutely. Um, I'll wake up super early. Like I'll be on my phone, text me whenever you need me to come. Um, and he did, and he gave me a ride. And, um, you know, it just shows like even outside of Blaze, like he's like become like such a good friend to me and like become like one of my best friends. A lot of nights we would end up at the Grand on, on Central Avenue, um, just going there to just, um, it was, it was fun. We would just, we would go and we would talk about our, our frustrations with Blaze, the things that were exciting us with Blaze, like, cause you know, being on a board, obviously you're going to run into obstacles and stuff like that. And it's last year specifically, we had some pretty big ones. And, uh, so it was just a nice opportunity to go vent. And I, I consider those people some of my closest friends. And, uh, when I think about my time at Blaze Radio, I know that I'm going to think about those nights at the Grand with some of my closest friends and people that I, I regard as, you know, people that have changed my life for the better. That was, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I assume you guys are chopping this up. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, Virgin, Ali Kresniak, Vaughn and Julia were both on that. Uh, Ethan Jordan, Nick Sanchez, Peyton Gallagher. Uh, I'm forgetting one person, and this is going to be embarrassing when I remember it. I just know it is. Nick, who am I forgetting? Virgin, I got Julia. Is Kirsten? No. Who's music director? Vaughn. Vaughn. I got them all, I think. Oh, we set a smaller board last year. Yeah. So I got them all. Yes, We're good. Yeah, I got you and Peyton on there. Um, um, we've also got a weather show coming out as well and a. Oh, what's the other show? Oh, sorry. Contagious, I think. Contagious after yeah. a pandemic. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Um, um, I only got a couple other I can go like a blooper reel. But um, throughout like, the music department, so we also have the Spark, which um, currently is down. <laughs> um, so we have the Spark, which is our... Um, let me restart that. Don't put the fact that the Spark is down in the docking area, because that's not good. Okay. <laughs> Don't ever give up on anything that you put your mind to. You know, we know that uh, this business is very competitive and very, very challenging. But, and, <clears throat> oh, I got something in the throat. I'll do that. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Because that was, that was super interesting. And Vaughn Jones, uh, the former music director. Uh, Everybody knows Vaughn. Vaughn. <laughs> Von Jones. <laughs> Von infamous Von Jones. And, and Von Jones. I was like, Fast Fast and Von, the music director, was uh, Von Nicole 
uh, cursed him myself. Of course, Vaughn has since graduated, yelling, Vaughn, <laughs> yeah, Vaughn about it. I was like, yeah, Vaughn got back to me. He said, Vaughn Jones, and I went to high school with Vaughn. Yvonne graduated. You know, I texted Vaughn again and I was like, Vaughn Jones. Where do you go? Hey. Um. Okay, we're done.